like the text messages I had were pretty serious, but like they became really, really serious after Parkland too. Before I even like said anything to anyone, I was like, let me think, like what if I turn on the news one day and I see his face and that he killed like 10, 20 people? Like that would be way more guilt I would live with the rest of my life than I would betraying a friendship. I'm so thankful like that Vermont didn't have to go through that. He said that he wanted to come back to Vermont and he hated school and Maine, so he didn't give a shit anymore. And I said, why? I know you had such a great future. Come on, Jack. And he said, I haven't wanted a culinary future for months anyways. Back in Vermont, I'm trying to start fresh. Just a few days ago, I was still plotting on shooting up my old high school. So it's not like I really wanted a future anyways. I was really taken aback by that. And this was all on February 13th. So then February 14th was the day of Parkland. So I just texted him and I said, do you see this on the news? And he said, do I see what on the news? I typically don't watch it. And I said, me either, but my friend's school just got shot up. And he said, that's fantastic, 100% support it. And I told him that you cannot say that. It's not good, Jack, people died. And then he responded, you can say that, but I think the human population sucks. So I like to hear about cases of natural selection. I wish humans would go extinct. Like, I don't care. And I was really confused and like really upset because he seemed really serious. And that's really the point in the text where like I knew that I had to just show these messages and hand my phone over. Walking through some of the details leading up to where we are today. Um, on Wednesday, the 14th of February, the Fairhaven Police Department received a report um, of someone who uh, may have been making threats uh, to do harm at the Fairhaven High School. I received, uh, I think it was an email that came through my phone. It may have been a text, I'm not sure, but it was, um, hey, did you know that Jack is back in town and that he bought a gun? And so the next morning, I distinctly remember walking into the classes and everything and then coming back down the hallway and saw kind of a ghostly look on my uh, director of school counseling saying, you got to get in here. And that's when I had heard and was first alerted to the young lady in Poughkeepsie. We received a call from the Dutchess County Sheriff's Department in New York who had been contacted by a female student who reported receiving messages over Facebook from an individual plotting to shoot up uh, Fairhaven High School. And then all of a sudden, the story and the feelings all kind of changed. Like, holy smokes, like this, this is real. Jack was, he was great to talk to one-on-one. -on -one. It was just, uh, it was great. It was very, very smart, um, thoughtful. The year before he left, there were some things that had caused some people to contact me or teachers that were alarming or had, had upset some people. You know, a lot of times in, as administrator, we're privy to knowledge that not everybody else knows, so you understand things on a different level than everybody else. Um, it was clear to me that Jack needed some something else that we couldn't provide him here. In some ways, when I look back 
at what has happened, it, it's clear to me that, well, he didn't come out and say, hey, are you guys paying attention because I need some help? Um, he did that in so many different ways, you know. He's being held without bail. The charges on the affidavit are attempted aggravated murder, attempted first degree murder, and attempted aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. From a law enforcement perspective, you have to build a case. You know, it's all based on evidence, and we can't just go around without probable cause and detain people. The issue becomes, what laws do you have on the books that when folks make these threats and there's a level of credibility and they have developed plans and made lists and gathered resources and equipment and gone out and trained to do this, well then what are we gonna do about that? No piece of information is too small. If you feel it could potentially keep a violent act from taking place, we must share these concerns with school safety partners in our efforts to keep these tragedies from happening in the future. And there was no closure, and there still isn't. Time helps. But certainly, it's it's always there. Personally, I um, I had a whole school and community to start thinking about, um, and I was I felt sad for Jack. That's what I felt. I I, I I think I was conflicted at both being mad and angry and sad about somebody wanting to harm other people, is, um, and then planning it out to that extent was. Uh, pretty hard to take. That was hard to take, yeah. How do we stop the next one? We keep reinforcing the fact that somebody heard something that if they had brought that to the attention of others, maybe um, they could have been stopped. But everybody needs to pay attention to this stuff. I don't know if he like knows this, but like he put a whole lot like on me, like to have to make that decision. And like, I like hope that like the person I knew in Maine when I was living in the same school and like center as him, like I hope that person was like who he was. And I hope that like, I believe that he wants to go back to that. I don't know, I just want him to be like helped and and I hope that like he just gets the help he needs to put it simply.